Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dolphin. This will be the second video in this series and unfortunately it's starting quite a while after the first one. Right after I released the first episode I had to travel for work and then very far away to Seattle for a wedding so I just had my hands tied with all that. But I'm home now, I've caught up on sleep, caught up on chores and I'm ready to get back to work on Dolphin. Looking back at the first devlog, I realized I didn't really make all that much progress. I just built out scaffolding for movement and created a prototype tile map. In this one, I want to make a lot more progress by expanding on the player's exploration and allowing him to interact a bit more with the environment. So I'm going to kick things off today by hooking up some colliders. While I'm working on that, I think this is a great time to discuss something that I failed to bring up in my first devlog, and that is my inspiration for Dauphin and why this project feels special to me. Back when I was just a little dev duckling, I had the privilege of growing up on this small but really beautiful lake in Virginia. I did spend a fair share of my childhood in front of the TV playing Mario and Zelda, but most of it was spent swimming, snorkeling, fishing, exploring, all that good stuff all over every inch of this lake. I did so with a handful of really close friends, with the closest being my next door neighbor, Sai. We spent hours diving to the bottom of the lake looking for old dumped treasure and countless late nights trying to scoop up bullfrogs from our canoes. Sai was, and still is, the closest thing I'll ever have to a brother. We actually ended up being roommates all the way through college, and because of our time spent growing up at the lake, we both shared an interest in the field of marine biology. I gave it a try with all the intro chemistry and biology classes, but obviously I didn't quite stick with that path. One semester of intro to computer science, and I knew that's what I had to do. Sai, on the other hand, did stick with it, and he now works as a marine biologist in a sea lab on the Gulf Coast. You're probably starting to figure it out at this point. Even though marine science didn't end up being my trade, I'm still super interested and passionate about it just because of my childhood. And working on Dolphin is kind of my way of bringing that to life. You may have also figured out by now that the character you play as in Dolphin is of course Sai. He's very excited about this project as well and he'll be providing me with a lot of the details of his life and work as a marine biologist that I'll be using as inspiration for the gameplay. Now, as far as the story goes, I have made a little bit of progress getting that fleshed out, but I'm just not quite ready to share that yet. I think it's gonna change a lot as I talk with Sai over the coming months. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that little bit of insight into why I'm so excited about this project and I really wanted to get started on it. Let's change gears and get back to development. All right, so I've been working for about 30 minutes on this Wednesday night after work and I've already got collisions up and running. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Pretty much just as you'd expect. If you move the player into the tree, he stops forward progress as he collides with it. Same with the bush, you just can't walk through it. Now this was really easy to set up and didn't actually require any code, but there was one hurdle that I had to get past and I'll go ahead and describe that to you. All right, so here we have the player and the tree. When I was initially designing the player's prefab and controller, I had the body type of my player's rigid body 2D set to kinematic. And I was doing this with what I thought was pretty good reason. I didn't want to add forces to the player to get him to move, but rather I'm using the input actions that I talked about in the last episode to map input from my WASD keys to changes in the player's position. The bad news here that I learned tonight is that kinematic rigid bodies cannot detect collisions with static rigid bodies or game objects that don't have rigid bodies at all and just a collider like this tree. You can see instead that if I change this to dynamic and try it again, we have collisions. All right, the last thing I wanna to do tonight is fix this behavior where when the player is walking, what I would consider to be behind the tree, he still goes over top of it. And I think I have a clever solution to solve this pretty easily. The behavior that I ultimately want here is for the player to pass in front of the tree when he is below it on the Y axis of the map and pass behind the tree when he is above it on the Y axis. My solution for this is a simple little component that automatically sets the sorting order of the sprite renderer on a game object based on the bottom position of that sprite. So what this results in is sprites that are further down on the Y axis, rendering above sprites that are above them on the Y axis. And here's the results of that code. Looks pretty great in my opinion, no noticeable hit on performance, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, it's going on seven o'clock now, and I'm pretty happy with the progress I was able to make after work today. Gonna grab some dinner and probably relax for a little bit, so hopefully we'll catch up sometime tomorrow. It is now Tuesday, February 25th, just after work around 5.30, and unfortunately it's been like six days since the last update, and part of that is due to the fact that I traveled to visit family this past weekend. Great to see everyone, but at the same time, I am kinda happy to be done with travel for the near term. Anyway, the good news is, in between now and the last update, I did make a little bit of progress, so we'll go ahead and run through that. 
First thing you'll notice is that the behavior of the camera is looking quite a bit nicer than it was before. Now this is just because I integrated Cinemachine, which is a great kind of all-in-one tool for managing a lot of your camera logic. I don't know nearly enough about Cinemachine as I should yet, but I've got it integrated and I'll be learning it as I go along with this project. I also did some work to calculate the correct orthographic size of the camera based on the size of my assets. So everything's just looking a little bit crisper now and the camera follows the player around, which is pretty fun. The next task I've started on triggers when we first load the scene. So we'll go ahead and hit play, and you'll see that we'll briefly fade out from black when the scene starts up. Now this is in preparation for working on scene transitions. So what I mean by that is, for example, when the player reaches the right side of the screen here, he'll hit a trigger point that transitions him over to a new scene. This is basically the kind of navigation between stages you would expect for a top-down 2D game like this. I'm expecting this to be quite a bit of work, so we're just going to jump in heads first tonight and see how much progress we can make. If you've been watching my most recent videos, you've probably noticed how much I enjoy sharing b-roll of this thing. This is a 10 gallon freshwater aquarium, and after hearing about my childhood on the lake, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that I have one of these in my office. In its own way, this aquarium makes me feel just a little bit closer to the lake back home. The little ecosystem that I've tried to cultivate within is also a gentle reminder for me to be mindful of my footprint on the earth and its inhabitants. I've tried to make this tank as low maintenance and self-sustaining as possible. I have an enormous amount of live plants, one pearl gourami, and about 20 shrimp of varying breeds. One of my goals with this tank is to cultivate a big healthy colony of these little shrimp, and when I was talking to my fiance about that, she came up with a pretty neat idea. You may already know that I have a Ko-Fi page, and for those of you who have supported my work and bought me a coffee, you guys rock, I really appreciate it. Moving forward though, I want to get a little more creative than just coffee. Starting today, if you choose to support the work that I do on this channel and donate to my Ko-Fi page, you will be sponsoring a shrimp for this aquarium. The shrimp will be symbolically named after you and I'll give you a shout out when I add the little guy to the tank. I really think that having this aquarium in my office helps me stay excited and motivated about Dauphin. So by sponsoring a shrimp, you are directly supporting the cause. Alrighty, it's going on 7 o'clock and I have the very basics of a scene transition system set up. You can see that I'm on the right side of my initial scene here and if I cross this border, we fade to black and fade in in the middle of a completely new scene. Similarly, on this new scene, if I go back to the left side and hit the wall, I'll load back into the original scene. What I have not solved yet is having the player load into the next scene with some sense of continuity. And what I mean by that is since the player is exiting on the right side of this screen, Seems like he should load in on the left side of this screen. I have a couple ideas of how to do that, but really I'm gonna be facing a challenge of making sure the player is loaded before I go try to manually set his position to a spawn point. Anyway, like I mentioned, it's seven o'clock, I'm getting hungry. This seems like a good problem to solve in the morning. So I think I'm gonna take it easy for the rest of the night, relax and catch up with y'all tomorrow. Good morning, folks. It is 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Got a good early start this morning. Coffee is in the works, and my plan for this morning is to continue work on my scene transition system. While I was laying in bed last night, I kind of had one of those moments where all of a sudden it clicked, and I think I thought of a way to implement player spawn points in the new scene. So I'm gonna grind away at that and see what I can accomplish. Alright guys, it's going on 8 o'clock and I have been pumping out code for like an hour and a half straight. This was way more complex than I imagined it would be, but at the end I have a working solution that is pretty flexible and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'll go ahead and run through what I accomplished. First I'll just start off with the demo here. You can see we're in the same prototype scene we've been working in and if I hit the right side of this scene, I correctly load into the left side of this new scene. Uh, similarly, I can head back in the left direction and load up on the right side of the original screen. It seems like such simple functionality to achieve, but boy, was it a lot of work. The brain behind this whole scene transition operation is a single source of truth that I'm calling scene map, and that holds all the possible transitions between scenes. Now, this looks really ugly right now, and I'm absolutely gonna clean it up to make it more readable and manageable, but for right now, all you need to know that each entry basically corresponds to a source scene, and a trigger name, and a target scene, and a spawn point name. From here, I have the notion of a scene controller, which takes in information about triggers that the player hits, goes and looks at the scene map for the destination, and loads up the destination and spawns the player appropriately. 
That turned out to be an absolutely massive task, but I'm really glad I have it in a workable condition so that I can move on to the next thing. Anyway, got to go to work for now. Hopefully I didn't fry my brain too much this morning. We'll catch up soon. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Saturday afternoon and I'm about to kick off the last but potentially most important segment of this week's devlog. Everything you've seen me build for Dolphin so far has essentially been a toolkit. I have a way to lay out levels based on tile maps, and now with my transition system, I have a way to traverse across those levels. It seems to me that the next logical step is to use those tools that I've built and see how easy it is to create new stages. What you're looking at here is some art that I've been working on over the past few days. Of course, this is just a palm tree, and to go along with that palm tree, I've been piecing together a work in progress beach tile set. I still have a lot of work to do learning pixel art, but I think these pieces of art here should be enough for me to try to build out a completely new area to explore. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. Let's jump into it. Alright guys, it's been about an hour and I have successfully created three scenes that the player can explore. Now it took a little bit of time to get into the groove of laying out the scenes and setting up the boundaries correctly, but once I figured all that out it went pretty smoothly and everything worked, so let's check it out. Here we are on our prototype grassland scene that we were working on before, but you'll see I've made quite a few changes to usher the player towards the south. Once we hit this exit point here, we will load up onto the beach, which I have to say is looking really cool. I'm so happy with how this tile set turned out, considering that I kind of threw this together pretty quickly. I think it's uh, an omen of good things to come once I get a little bit better at this pixel art stuff. Anyway, you can see I've created a path here to take us to our third scene, which is quite a bit longer. I wanted to make sure that the camera would follow the player correctly on these longer scenes. Honestly, I couldn't be any happier with how this turned out. I think it looks and feels like other 2D games in this genre. And I'm just really happy that I was able to build this out pretty quickly. Based on the results of that demo, I think it's very safe to say that I have completed basic isometric exploration, which was the goal of this devlog. Really happy with that. Uh, there's certainly more I can build onto it and more that I will build onto it. But for right now, I think I'm ready to move on to the next big task in the roadmap, which is basic combat. And that will, of course, be the focus of the next devlog. Thank you so much for watching and for all the support. I had so much fun working on Dolphin these past couple weeks and it's got me super energized for the next episode. So until then, have a good one.